It's 2.30 a.m. East London. These three men have just left a nightclub, heading for a car they've left nearby. A CCTV operator is tracking them because he thinks they could be vandals. This is 17-year-old Michael Lynch, a burglar on bail, who is about to become a murderer. The punch is unprovoked. Lynch joins in. But he isn't only using his fists. He has a knife in his pocket, and just out of sight of the camera, Lynch stabs one of the two men in the heart. Fatally. The stab man is a 20-year-old student from Essex, Daniel Pollan, on a night out celebrating his best friend Andy Griffith's 20th birthday. Daniel tried to protect Andy, and then when they turned on him, he put, puts his hands up. That is a peaceful gesture. It's not violent. It's not like he was going to attack them. He put his hands up as if to say, what do you want? And they still attacked him after doing that. Now Lynch turns on Andy, stabbing him in the chest and back. Daniel Pollan is still standing, trying to help. One of the men chases him away. The three attackers drive off, heading home, only 40 seconds after the attack began. Meanwhile, another CCTV camera records Daniel collapsing, with blood pouring from his heart. Andy Griffiths is now on his feet, barely conscious, also bleeding heavily. But help is at hand. Not the police or ambulance. Daniel's sister, Kirsty, has arrived, as arranged, to pick him and Andy up from the town centre. As we sort of pulled into the brewery car park, you can sort of look across it. And I was like, oh, I can't see anyone. So I thought I'll like, get my phone out and call, call him. And sort of as we just turned around the pool, uh, corner, my sort of headlights picked up and he was just sort of lying in the middle of the road, like not moving. And um, I sort of stopped the car and it was just like, Blood everywhere. <laughs> so, um, I like, me and my friend jumped out of the car and we like called an ambulance. His eyes were open, but he wasn't like responding to anything we were sort of saying to him. There was just a tiny cut in his t shirt and there was just a, the most tiniest wound, and you would never think sort of so much blood and could come out or something like that. <laughs> Within minutes, police and ambulance are also on the scene, trying desperately to save Daniel's life. Daniel was stabbed once, Andy Griffiths four times. The first blow broke Andy's jaw, knocking him out. Neither he nor Daniel know the men who are attacking them. The first thing I remember was feeling this almighty pain in the right side of my face. And then the next thing I saw was um, Michael Noka pulling the phone away from me, and this sort of punching motion, sort of someone hitting me in the back. The someone was Michael Lynch. Using the knife he'd punctured Daniel's heart with, this time Andy didn't pass out, and watched as the three escaped. I was sort of laying on my side, saw a car in the distance, with the door slightly ajar, someone looking out of it at me, making sure that I was down and not able to get up. Andy still has no idea he and his best friend have been stabbed. So the car went speeding off. I managed to get myself up, thinking, Where, where's Dan? Is, is, he, is he in that car? Is he somewhere around here? Um, what, what just happened? And then I was thinking, my chest really hurts. So I looked down and then there was just, I was just pouring with blood. I'd, I knew I'd been stabbed then. In shock, Andy Griffiths staggers off to find help. Initially back to the nightclub, and from there to an ambulance, which took him to hospital. As he lay in the ER, Andy realised the person in the next bed was dying. So I was saying, is that my friend? Is that my friend? We were getting really irate with them, because they weren't... I could tell they weren't telling me something. I tried to pull out all my drips. I tried to get out of the bed to go to him. 
but he was con he was connected up to the ECG machine at the time, and it was just flatlining. Lots of doctors were coming in and asking if he was allergic to things and things like that, and you kind of think, oh, you know, it'll be all right, he's going to be OK, he will survive. And then they come in and they just tell you that they're really sorry, but he died, and you just can't believe it. It's the most surreal thing in the world. Daniel's killer was caught quickly. The number plate on the car led police right to him. Michael Lynch was sentenced to a minimum of 15 years. His accomplices got five years each. The CCTV of Daniel Pollan's murder is being shown because his family want everyone to see what really happened. We came to the decision that we did want the CCTV to be released in public because it's such an unprovoked attack. I think it's important that people do see that, you know, it's not just about gang culture, it's not, you know, knives aren't used just in gang culture. Andrew and, like, my brother Daniel didn't do anything in any way to cause what happens to them. I just think people need to realise, you know, n knife crime is everywhere, it happens all the time, and, it, and that's why I think it's quite important that people do see it. <laughs>